Welcome back, fellow armchair journalists. This is Gamer1745, and we're now September 1938, and playing as Italy with the um, by, by Blood Alone DLC for Hearts of Iron 4. We're taking a look at it and hearing me rant about things I don't like, like yeah, they allowed Germany to take Austria without Italian permission for some reason. I don't know. Okay, um, Ethiopia still resists. Okay, Ab uh, Abyssinia is still nowhere near being pacified. The resistance to Italian occupation remains stiff. Uh, the Duce has no kind words for either the Abyssinian people or the efforts to quell the opposition and calls um, a national calls uh, operation a national embarrassment. He complains that the Italian colonists have a rough appearance and crude manner which is not installing any respect in the local population. Okay, other political power and seven others. Compliance, negative. Okay, well, that compliance is down. Very good, very good. Uh, they, that's um, some of the good things with um, order of battle is the Pacific and U.S. Marine um, stuff, where a lot of the other games are focused only on Europe. Okay, Hungary renounces the Treaty of Trianon, and the Munich Agreement is happening. Okay. So, we are going here. Yeah, wait for sales. Um, I'm not. I I I fully endorse that. Um, that policy of waiting for sales. Fully endorse it, indeed. Okay, intensify torpedo manufacturing. These native bases, 70 days, please, mm. Somalia, pile fuel, which we could do now. Okay, we're getting close to here, so less than 90 days, and we'll get um, three fuel silos, consumption navy down. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. I'm not going to say we're going to have plenty of fuel, but we're going to have a lot more with this fuel down here than they did historically. Uh, not a fan of naval missions. Well, okay. I mean, everybody should get should play what they like. All right. Um, do we want to try to do okay? Um, We are doing um, grand battle plans, so we don't want to get something that does other like mobile warfare doctrine costs down. Okay. Um, lose him as a commander? No, he's still there. Okay. Um, the finished DLC has a bug in one of the missions where you need like 2,000 damage, which artillery is impossible. Well, um, if you haven't already, post it over on the um, Order Battle forums. Um, it might just be for the console, so maybe they haven't gotten the feedback on it. I don't, I just don't know. But um, I think they will pay attention. Um, and try to fix things. Slytherine is generally pretty good about that, I would say. Okay, we're getting just September, so not quite yet. Um, getting there, but not better airframes. Uh, 
Yeah, let's... And again, if, every, if anybody is new around here, please subscribe or follow. And of course, even for the live stream, if you hit the, the like button, it, it helps with the YouTube, YouTube algorithm. I gotta learn to speak more clearly. I know, I know, I know. Um, well. Yeah, I don't know the likelihood of that, the processing power and all that, that's needed for it. Okay, I think we're going to cancel your training and put all of these there. There we go. We just have one that's not so great. The rest are pretty good. Reasonably well trained. I don't know with controllers how easy it would be to move around the menus. I, I don't play any um, console games. Uh, not that I don't like the idea, I just always been a PC player. Had, had before that, I had a uh, Apple II, so just got used to playing on computers. Okay. We're going to get rid of the cavalry, cavalry units, but I'd like to... Um, That for the moment. Now I know you can use a mouse and keyboard with some consoles, some. Uh, well, let's look over at logistics. Okay, well. We've now fully filled out our fighters and our close air support air squadrons. Let's get some tactical bombers in production. Take a look. This is a variant. Okay, bomb, yeah. That'll get us more fuel stockpiled up. Um, to the best of my knowledge, there is no current planned Hoi 5. The reason I say that is, um, well, one, I just don't know of any, but Podcat left, okay, um, Paradox, uh, I forget, um, the president of Paradox resigned, uh, I don't know all the reasons behind it, 
he is was still a very I don't know if it's majority or just large holdings in the company he maintained all of that he left the company a woman took over paradox I forget her name and paradox very quickly after that started to blossom out into producing a lot of different games well I don't know that it went so well and definitely um, Imperator Rome, as they totally acknowledge because they stopped all production on it, um, is a failure. I think, I don't know if what Empire of Sin, whether that's considered a failure or a success. And they were moving into other games that I'm sure all sounded good, but they weren't the core games of Paradox. Well, at some time around that time, um, we'll call him Podcat, the guy who um, was, Johan um, was the lead developer, the lead of developing Hoi 4. He, um, after it, basically after its release, and I think the sort of the main guy actually sort of running it was Podcat. I, I don't know what the internal office politics were, but um, he was definitely involved in it. Um, Podcat takes over um, continuing development of Hoi 4 after its release. Johan moves over to run or setting up and running um, the development of Imperator Rome. And like I said, it was a failure. In my opinion, they just got lazy. The company, Johan, whatever. Um, and that failed. And then, like I say, um, they moved into a lot of other games. Podcat announces his leaving the the, team, the Hoi 4 team to head up another development team within Paradox. He specifically says not Hoi 5. So he doesn't. He didn't want to start the rumor. I mean, he, he won't say what it is because it's a secret project. Um, but he he didn't want to start the rumor that it was going to be Hoi 5. He also said he was something different. You know, something significantly different, supposedly. I don't know what it means beyond that. Uh, was an external... Okay, well, okay, not a development city. Okay, Suter... I know Suter knows probably more than I do on some of these things, but um, he may not be in a position to say exergen um what he knows so um and of course suter correct me if i'm wrong on any of these things that i'm saying okay it was an external development okay not a paradox yeah i don't follow everything closely there's and i've had a limited contacts with um particularly like podcat and when i was back in the um you know the um beta testing for um, Hoi 4, you know, contact with uh, Paradox Development Studios. I've had smaller contact with um, Paradox Interactive, which is the uh, the, um, the publisher, sort of two different entities that sh live in the same building as far as I, I know, but um, two different companies. Uh, so do correct me if I'm if I'm getting anything substantially wrong here that you that you feel you you can correct on what I'm saying. Um, and then, um, I'm just, I blank on names. And for, uh, sorry, I'm blanking on some names here. Then, um, because I think of dispersion of effort and things, uh, the previous president of Paradox comes back as, or previous CEO or whatever you want to call him, comes back as being CEO and cancels a bunch of the other projects. I don't know if it was one of the ones that a podcast was working on or not after leaving this. Yeah, you're generally correct. As you say, yeah, don't, don't, yeah, don't, I'm not asking you to add stuff you can't say, but if you know I'm getting something wrong that's out in public domain, please do correct me. Um, because I'm not trying to put out, I'm not trying to put out a bad information here. I'm, I'm, you know, and whether the other projects would have been good games or not, I don't know, because um, I don't know what a lot of them were, obviously, but they probably would not have been core audience of Paradox player space. So, um, and so a lot of those other projects get canceled. 
Um, I hope because you know other name other people I've had limited contacts over the years in Paradox people and they've always been nice to me even though I complain about things on their games. Um, oh, I'm going to get the oh I'm going to get the Sturm Tiger for sure, Rick. No doubts about that. I don't know if it's going to be hard, but um, I'm going to get it. It's just cool. Not that it's going to be a good vehicle. It's just going to be a, a big, mean vehicle. So um, they've reduced it down um, with their dispersion efforts. Realize there is no major DLC for Germany yet on um, Boy 4. Hello, Alex. How you doing? And I know I contacted them long, long ago, and I got the feedback uh, from my Third Reich events deal or uh, mod to convert it or contribute it or whatever, work with a DLC for Germany. And my the reply was not yet. This is when Podcat was still running um, Hoi 4 and fairly early in the process. Um, I mean, it was after release of the game and. Um, he he also because uh, I had I did put a version of it that worked with a you know just a in development version that worked with an older version of um, Hoi for the current version. If I released it, it wouldn't work with the current version um, into the um, beta forum just for them to take a look at and whatnot. And so so he knows that you know back then knows that I was working on it and. I think would make a great core of a DLC for for Germany um, uh, and whatnot. But um, I would love to work with Paradox. I'm not, I'm not going to move to Sweden, but I would love to remote work with Paradox on a, a German DLC. If Suter wants to mention anything in the future to anybody, I don't know. Um, but you can see my body of work for Hoi 4 and Hoi 3 to know that there is a certain amount of skill and capability there uh, um, to, do, to do at least what I, what I can do. Um, but without them even doing Germany, I don't think there's any time soon. Now, will there be a, a Hoi 5? Probably, someday. I... I don't know whether that's, and they've also, and I think they have learned, especially with Hoi 4, is don't announce games until you're truly into beta with them because of the problems with the delay in Hoi, releasing Hoi 4, and in my opinion, and I think even the devs would agree that, that worked on it, they released it too early. It just became... Um, too much of a public relations problem that it was known and people were demanding it so they pushed it out the door maybe there were other re financial reasons or other reasons that they also released it early but and they delayed it considerably from um, what originally was done but it, it in my opinion it wasn't ready to be released uh, when it was released you know the state of the game so they might be working on something in theory uh, exertion but we're talking years down the road, even if they are working on something now. That's mine. Yeah, um, Suter, I, you know, I, I you know, um, you know, I, I, I've not talked to, the, I don't think that, you know, unless he was part of the team before, um, the development team, because I did talk to a few people um, when I was, you know, part of the beta and whatnot um, through the Paradox message forums, but. So Podcat was well aware of Third Reich events and whatnot. And just because some of the stuff happened in beta, I'm not going to um, expose more than just that I, I posted it there. Um, and it's a German-focused thing. And so, yeah, if they want to work with it, um, you know, I don't have any serious demands. Obviously, we'd have to come, you know, whatever sort of agreements of however, however it would be done. And I would be very willing to, you know, open to to suggestions or negotiations or whatever, meaning that kind of thing, and just work something out, uh, whatever it would be, uh, and I would be quite flexible on that. Uh, I would love to make a historically based, or at least the historically based part of a German DLC. I have less interest in like restoring the Kaiser or something like that chain of events. I'm more looking at the history based um, view of World War II in Germany. 
but yeah, I think I can contribute a lot to to a um, that, nope, not never worked on Hoy myself. Yeah, currently yes, but I mean, just if you know, feel free to ping me if you think I could. Yeah, yeah, I, I I'm sure you got friends on the team, but yes. Paradox needs to stop chasing mythical wider audience. Well, I think that was the um, and um, uh, what um, why am I? I'm picturing his face, the the uh, the CEO of Paradox, but I'm blanking on his name. Um, but um, Wesser, that's right, Wesser. I think I think I'm getting his last name right. Um, sorry if I'm not. Uh, I think that's part of what they're doing. What I think, and I know um, IKB and Exurgent especially, does not like Hoi for, for its fantasy elements. And I describe Hoi for as an attempt at having EU 20th century. And that is not so much chasing the wider audience, it's chasing the Crusader Kings uh, EU and Vicky audience. Uh, yeah, Fred, right, West, Wester, okay, Wester, sorry, sorry, Suter, yeah, um, yeah, I just, I blank on names for some reason and trying to call them up, so, thanks. So, yeah, you know, um, and, and I don't know how ready or willing uh, Paradox is wanting to work with people that are so remote. But the new DLC is good. Um, I love the actual German focus. Yeah, um, the new DLC is okay. Um, uh, yeah, on the whole, it's good. Uh, on the whole, it's good, I would say. That's how I would do it. NATO symbols. Yeah, I, I like playing with those. Um, I'm glad they, they added them in as an option. But um, I'm used to those. I know other people prefer the the other things. You know, I, I I know they have an art budget for games within. You know, get the get the artist over here. Why couldn't they give us a NATO version of these things, people? They see they're lazy. Because I, I get this, the Fez, okay, for the colonial troops. All you had to do was was come in here for the NATO version. Look at the template, figure out, is this a mountain division or an infantry division? Well, this looks sort of into, if, entry, ah, infantry division-esque. Come over here, grab the NATO symbol, put the fez in the center of this, uh, this division. Okay, for your cavalry. Um, Trupos, um, Spahis, or however you pronounce this, sorry. It's cavalry. Just give us a cavalry thing you know, for this, um, and your, your black shirt, um, cause these are black shirt groups. See here, look, militia just have done, you know, okay. But if you want to do the beret, eh, don't know how the beret is all that important, but whatever, but you know, just, just do that. I don't know why they're being so lazy and not doing that. That's just laziness. It doesn't take it doesn't take an artist much time to grab what they've already done. Maybe get rid of the green. I don't know or whatever, and just do that. You're gonna buy a lot of premiums during the sale. Yeah, I'm going to look at see if there's anything I I too Rick need as premiums during the sale. Rick, are you a member of the Discord forum? Um, we play a lot of War Thunder over there. If I'm I don't know if this is a Rick from the past or some other Rick. I'm sorry, last name. Yeah. Recently bought a A20 bomber pack for 10 euros. Okay, no, you're not that other Rick then if you're buying in euros. He was an American. Um, 20 gold. Yeah. Um, lazy paradox mechanic. Yeah, I, you know, it's just... You know, it doesn't take a lot to, to sort of, you know, come up with some hybrids and over here, you know, come up with these... Irregular type guys. What are they supposedly holding it? Is that supposed to be holding a um, a helmet or something? I don't know. I don't know. But no, just a player. Okay. Well, hey, um, 
you can check out um hey arno would you want to drop in another link on youtube and maybe even on twitch if you're still around to our discord server just in case if rick ever wants to join us and play we will be playing sunday um and we're happy to have new people play with us fantasy alt history stuff wouldn't be so bad if it was kept plausible there are mods that did that if the whites won the russian civil war yeah i think there is a game and it could be based off of the hoy 4 game they could start in could have several start dates we could start like in 1910 1914 or something like that and call it eu 20th century and lead up to the cold war or maybe into the cold war that could be a cool game and in that game you know whether you win or lose you know you sort of kind of have you know that's why you sort of do 1910 is you sort of have the alliances that are set and of course with that game you could import your um vicky 2 or vicky 3 game now you know, uh, import that game into it as a starting base or start out at the world situation, you know, 1910, 1914. So you already sort of have the alliances set and you sort of get ready for World War One, and you have a version of World War One, and you see who wins, who loses, and you go on from there. And then, yeah, you could have the communist winning or whatever. And I'd be fine with that. I, I you know... I would be good with playing that. I just, I'm part of the original audience of Hoi 3 in that I want a World War II game with plausible, like, well, what if the Republicans win in the Spanish Civil War? You know, maybe with more, so you know, actual Soviet divisions showing up and whatever, and they win the war. Well, when France loses, you say, you know, historically, France loses and Germany is getting ready to invade you know the Soviet Union they know they have a Soviet puppet state sitting over here so Germany is going to face a two-front war with the possibility of Britain or somebody maybe sending in um, you know an expeditionary corps so they've got to manage that I am good with that kind of what if I just don't see a realistic um, starting in 1936 a realistic communist or kaiser takeover so i'm not as interested in that i'm not against um paradox making what if scenarios not at all even even within this i just wanted them to nail world war nail down world war ii first then um then start to add other stuff but it's their player base. You know, you can blame the success of their other ga games, and they're great games. I'm not knocking, um, you know, Vicky or EU. Hell, I played the hell out of EU when it was just EU way back in the day. Hadn't even really heard of Paradox. I bought the thing in a box in a computer store, and it was, like, great. And then e eventually EU2 came out and played the hell out of that way back in the day. I hadn't even really heard of Paradox. You know, didn't pay attention to the, you know, company production names at that time um so that was just you know playing stuff because it was great so it's not that i'm against eu or crusader kings or whatever i'm not at all and i'm not at all against a, a modern start you know either import either import your your previous generation game or um uh you know start with a with the historical settings because you actually most uh, play hoy four for world war ii stuff but yes the focus trees and the alt history are very popular with a lot yes and it's and it's the community base that again it's not a, a slam that that paradox has developed that community base it's just the fact that they've developed that community base and it gets popular how many people want to restore the um you know uh, byzantine empire or something it, it's it's a lot of people i get that 
I like I actually like I don't play it a lot but I like Kaiserreich in that it is set up what I call the weird and wacky world of Kaiserreich but they sort of created this world of you know um, you know Germany were winning you know World War one and then creating a lot of sort of what if based off that well okay that's cool would Kaiserreich should Kaiserreich become a um, no I yeah um, pretty much with historical focus okay good to hear Suter yeah I figured um, with some of our previous conversations I know you like the history stuff um, maybe I should be paying more attention to here train irregulars okay um, ooh, that looks good disband the irregulars no um, Yeah, let's do that. I should probably be paying more attention to this stuff over here. Adult medium, establish regio. What is this? Um, Albania becomes. Okay. Regio. Okay. I don't think I want to do this. Oh, add info. Okay. Become owner controller. Or the Hungarian claim to manage Italian occupation in yes. Discredit Ali Selassie. Yes, I sh like I say I should be. Reese's. Okay, we should be playing some of this a little better than I have been. Not going to go crazy, but um, let's see. We could create a collaboration as government and independent state of that. Hmm. We'll see. And I, I truly, I trust me. I, I wish only the best for, for Paradox because they've given me great games. I don't just because time and other um, things. I don't maybe play them as much as I would, you know, EU or whatever. Um, but I love them and they're great, and I want them to continue. And I love working with. Um, Slytherin Matrix, they just, I don't think, have the, um, I don't know whether you want to come to budget or to um, talent or whatever to build an E or a, a Hoi 4 level game. I wish they did. I know they have people there that would want to make it more my vision than what this is, but you know, Alvaro, who makes uh, War Plan, has done a great job, but he's basically a one-man show. Yeah, he gets people to do certain assets, but he's making and programming the AI for the game himself. Um, and, you know, he's working right now on Global War Plan. I don't know exactly what it's going to be called. You have War Plan and you have War Plan Pacific. And uh, Herbert and... Um, uh, and uh, Bill, who um, has made uh, Strategic Command, various Strategic Command games, and their latest is Strategic Command, the American Civil War. I mean, they're a little bit more than a two-man show, but um, they're sort of at the core of the two of them. Um, and for what that game is in the turn-based game, it's a great game. It's just not um, as detailed as we're getting in with a Hearts of Iron game. Okay, well, I think... Uh, yeah, let's produce another civilian factory. I like some more of those. And uh, one more. We 
think they have the budget, the lack of will and organization. They have a bunch of super talented people, but it's hard to really uh, scale up. That's it. Yes, War Plan Pacific. Yeah. And that, that's part of it is because, um, you know, when, when it, you know, Matrix and Slytherin are um, basically nowadays really just two brandings of the same company. Um, though technically sort of some of the, the main Matrix people um, live over, I think, in Virginia area here. And they're the ones that are produ you know, producing um, War in the East 2 and are going to be producing, though it's been delayed by various things, um, Steel Tigers, which is a follow-on to Steel Panthers game, great old game. Uh, you know, going to keep keep my understanding for that game is they're keeping the the tradition alive of the game, but updating it to a more modern computer situation. And you know, um, but they're sort of you know production wise focused in in the settings in England here. But Alvaro lives in Florida, I know, and I think Bill and Herbert, I think, are also American. Um, but and then they have you know teams all over Europe and so they're not as centralized and um, some of the people are you know with their whole setup it, it, it's decentralized situation so although they do fund and contribute to the development of games directly like War in the East 2 they are also very much a publisher of other um, games or, or you know for other studios and I do know sometimes that hasn't worked out and so game they come to a certain level of disagreement with developers of some games and they've parted companies before or after you know um, you know so like future versions haven't continue to be a joint project with them and I don't know the you know contract and situations why those have happened other than what they basically said at different times is we we disagreed on like the direction of a game or something like that and that's all that they've state and that they end they end their association okay um we're doing one and a half train or a little more than that obviously uh, a month and I don't know if that will be enough but i guess we're going to leave that for now um i yeah we'll, we'll we'll do a little more of that get that up and going there you okay with most of the devs work with um alvaro on target sims herbert yes we're across the atlantic absolutely yes suter yeah and so um Yeah, it, it would have to be, you know, getting that talent better organized up. And I know they, they put a lot of, of um, command modern operations, put a lot of emphasis on that. And they're getting I know the budget for doing that is because they're selling the professional versions for I think considerable money to governments um, particularly the US and British government oh so, yeah okay so we have this here now uh, 70 days light tank production cost down 5% um, speed, okay Nice. Now we're getting toward closer, closer to the war. Maybe in railway that would be nice. Seventy days, thirty-five days only. Okay, triple e infrastructure added. Um,
Let's just take a look over here if there's something I think I should be doing. I know we can do that, but i to scroll back in anyways. Okay, the Italy first versus... I think we're going to go down historical, but we're sort of, I don't know, waiting a bit. Waiting to sometime maybe just the mid... 39. Yeah. Um, anything we're going to go try to try to get that. Okay, that's good there. Yeah, let's do another um, 35 days. That's pretty quick to get that done. No, it's just one more naval dockyard, but cool. Let's do that. Happy Rommel, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do it. Okay, failed military expansion. Oh, how did we fail? This failed. Okay. I don't like these missions. The whole design concept was we were we were the leader, not we were being told we were being told by the leader what to do. Firefighting drills, we have some better artillery capabilities. We're January 39, so let's start here. I'm sure I know. Obviously, from what he's saying, IKB, who's big into railways, he works on them. Um, I'm sure it would have been a benefit for the Italians, but would a railway, a combination of technical and, okay, the world will see, activate mission industrial research. Okay, well, maybe we'll keep that going enough to... Industrial research days has advanced machine tools completed. Okay, so we are. Let's pay attention to this because this is this is a direction that I actually want to go into. Um, so we can do advanced machine tools as soon as one of these other ones get done, which is in 19 days. So we'll do that. Um, but yes, having a railway would be useful, but how useful? Because you, you're you not going to have it, obviously, here, because unless the British build it for you, and then, of course, you get to use theirs. You have the vulnerability of the tracks to the um, LRDG, you know, the motorized version of... Um, Lawrence of Arabia, if you will. I know you guys all know the of the LRDG or the SAS type units, and they could easily be either blowing up the railways or putting explosives under the railways to blow up when the train goes over. Um, that would wreck a lot of stuff, and that would be a. Um, serious uh, problem. Uh, you would also have, um, I think we want to do railway in innovations back in Italy for 70 days here. Um, you would have airstrikes, not so much against the railroads, because although you can do that and they did do that, it's not that easy to blow up railroads that are on. Uh, uh, there's a photograph. I, I don't have it handy, but I've seen it. There's a photograph of of a moonscape somewhere. I think it's in France of a moonscape of craters all around. And there's this railway running right through it. 
And it was the Allies' attempt at blowing up uh, this railway. And I think it was maybe the railway, I think maybe, I forget what it was exactly, leading to one of the V-2 um, rocket launching platforms, and because they were bringing them in on V-2s or something. I forget what it exactly was. But they weren't able, you know, I'm sure they cut the railway at moments, but the Germans were able to quickly enough um, repair the railways to keep them functional, you know, meaning they'd blow it up, but within hours they'd have it back and going. And you just, there's so many, so much tons of bombs, you can just see it's this huge crater scape. You know, just crater on top of crater on top of crater kind of thing. And it just created this area around the, trying to, to destroy this. And it just really wasn't working to effectively stop the Germans from doing this. And, and so I, I take that picture in mind and go, oh, try to do that down here in North Africa? Yeah, you can drop it, but all, you know, all you got to do is quickly have you know replacement railways and whatnot and keep it going. But what you can do is readily spot and destroy, um, you know, the rail the trains themselves with aircraft. And of course, there's at least one incident of British submarines um, artillerying a um, a train. You know, they sunk a train. Uh, 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 running along the Italian coast and they were doing commando missions at times in just times sometimes just the I think actual submarine crew themselves and not like specialized commandos but so you'd have easily have specialized because you got to run it near the coast um, submarines doing commando raids against it there and so I just have to wonder how, you know, I'm sure it would help some. Where it may help more is in early development and setting up the infrastructure that would allow larger formations to, to struggle here. And you just have, you know, I, I'm not saying it wouldn't be worth it, but I don't think it's like entirely happy Rommel or happy Italians that it's, it's a war-winning thing. Hello, Pepe123. Well, there's um, tank designers, um, new new Italian um, focus trees. So a lot new going on here. Okay, we have one new. Let's just since we only have one new one, we're just going to put him building more convoys because I just want to have enough enough convoys to deal with sinkings and keeping it going. So I'm not saying you shouldn't do sí, the. No, we got camel cores now. Cool. See now here they did it right. Okay, see so here we have a a um, a, uh, a cavalry unit with a hump in it, creating. I guess I'm guessing there are because I don't know that that would be uh, a a, Na a no NATO uh, symbol for camels or desert core, but um, that is a nice creative way. I'm guessing that's what they mean by it. Nice creative way of giving us a um, new NATO calendar. So here here they here they did here they did good. Here they did good at doing this. I'm very willing to give praise where praise is due. Control of central med yeah, exactly, Suter. It, it's if you can control this, if you can put enough air air power coming out of places like Crete, like um, you know, Sardinia um, and Sicily and taking out Malta um, because Malta, yes, you can run and they do, they could and they would, they did run submarine straight out of Alexandria, but they also did a lot out of, um, you know, Valletta coming out of Malta here uh, to the point of, I don't know if you realize this, um, the submarines would come in the British submarines would come in and do repairs, do, you know, maintenance work during the night with miminal lights on. And during the day, what they would do is, because the Valletta Harbor is very large, they would, um, just before dawn, they would, you know, unhook the um, submarine from the port and move it onto the harbor and it would just then go down and, and with just a minimum crew on it, just, just a caretaker crew, and go sit on the bottom of the harbor during the day. One, so that the Italians, because mostly Italians, but also German air units, wouldn't be able to reconnaissance and see that there was 
um, submarines even there, so that they're even operating out of there. And two, they wouldn't be targetable by aircraft. And so they would sit on the, um, the bottom of uh, Valletta Harbor until night and then come up and continue to do, you know, rearming, refueling, whatever, giving the cruise breaks, and then go back out. And so they would bring in torpedoes by submarine um, to then give out to other submarines and then go back. So there was sort of a, um, you know, a, a bit of an, and, and bring in some critical supplies, not enough to keep the island alive like the big convoy, but, you know, I don't know, penicillin or, or something that was small and critical that you could stick on some submarines and get them into um, to Malta during the siege. But it, having that there, was a thorn in the side considerably, and had they taken that out, that, I would agree, Suter would be a much better, um, you know, connectivity between, for Rommel, I think. And it was very doable. It was all very doable. Um, I saw a video of a war game of... Um, that they someone developed a big tabletop war game, did really well. Uh, you know, sort of a, a a personal creative war game, not not a generally commercial available one that deals with the invasion of Malta by the Axis forces. And it was and the, and in, in the the video of the one that they they played out, it, the British were able to hold out from an invasion, but. Uh, and it was looked at a very realistic what if invasion as, as sort of as planned, not though um, what could have been done, you know, and this was just basically Brigade Remke, you know, Remke, the paratrooper unit that was added, German added to it. They could have brought down more parachute divisions. Uh, it was just Hitler after the huge losses of the airborne forces in Malta basically forbade them from doing more paratroop type operations. Germany could have moved the Luftwaffe that was fighting, you know, in uh, the east here, whether Barbarossa or whatever, moved all of that down to the Mediterranean and not done Barbarossa in 41. And this is sort of Bevan Alexander um, theory, and I entirely agree with him, that had they focused on the Mediterranean in 41, in well, 41 or 40 through 41, and done that and secured it, Germany support to Italy could readily have done it. Had Germany not just sort of left this to be the Italian front early on, but really come in right after the defeat of France. Yeah, you're still sort of preparing and thinking about an invasion of Britain, fine, but still shift a fair amount of air power down, and especially by the time you cancel serious doing an invasion of, of did I say France, of England, sorry, um, but come down here and really focus on securing here in the east, see about Malta, and really say screw you to the French and secure up um, French North Africa from an invasion you make it really, really, really hard for the Allies to come in, basically to the point that they cannot operate, uh, operate navally in, in the Mediterranean. Because if you put a, a significant, big enough German Luftflotte down here, I don't think you can move in American fleets, um, you know, along with a, a, a significant um, Italian air element there. And if you've taken out you know, the Northern Red Sea, shall we say, um, all of that, you're going to have to have the Americans fighting their way up into here because this is just becomes, maybe history would prove me wrong, but I really don't think the Americans are going to sail right in up here and do a landing, you know, up uh, the south of the Suez Canal here. Um, I think they're going to have to fight their way up, and I think it will be a very hard and the ability for Germany to concentrate A core, a couple of cores, which becomes an army here and here and can really hold that off. And then at that point, an invasion of the Soviet Union and overrunning. So um, Soviets would surely have ambushed Germany at, at some point.
Well, see, I don't think this takes the bulk of the German army because of supply problems, because of supply conditions. This takes the bulk of the Luftwaffe, yes, but that's very flexible. That can move back north to um, you know deal with it. So you keep the bulk of the German army sitting here. They've already, you know, um, bef in, in 41, just before Barbarossa, there's a massive earthquake right in here. And at least one German division is significantly, and it's even publicized in a newspaper article um, that I, I used to, for my Third Reich events um, uh, mod, that um, in, its, in its California, based newspaper article at the time um, talking about uh, the German army helping with earthquake relief because it, it is a massive it's somewhere in here massive earthquake um, happens and the, there's German army division stationed there already and so but it's known that the German army is helping with earthquake relief in America you know out in California in, in a newspaper so you know this is well known that the German army is sitting here and it's mainly sitting here of course because uh, that Russia has taken these these areas, well, these areas here, um, and because they want to pro protect Ploetsky, so they've moved in here, and that's what at least Stalin, shall we say, under, understands this as a defensive measure, and so you know, whether obviously it becomes an offensive measure eventually to Stalin's shock and surprise and near mental breakdown. Um, he does sort of have a few days, you know, a week or so, whatever. Don't talk to me. I'm hiding in the closet kind of thing, literally, while well, hiding in a room somewhere. Uh, UK could have held, held Crete if you move about one or two platoons of troops. It was a close thing. Yes, they could have. They could have held Crete, I am sure. Um, there was a, I don't know if it's a division or brigade, but there's that scale of troops of Greeks sitting down here that literally have no ammunition because Greek is a hodgepodge of ammunition of, of ammunition types. And whether they were sent down, I, I presume they were probably evacuated here, but there was literally, they literally did not have any bullets for their rifles. And Britain had no bullets for, you know, whatever it was. I don't know what, what caliber of rifles they were right offhand. But it was either a brigade or a division. It was a large formation that the Greek soldiers, they got rifles, they got some machine guns. There's the Germans. Oh shit, we have bayonets because they literally did not have even, you know, like five rounds to shoot a piece. And so they were, you know, helpless um, at being engaged. Uh, had those had ammunition, that would have put another brigade in it. Um, and yes, I know you're talking about one to two platoons of troops on particular airfields. I don't know if that quite would have been enough, but maybe, IKB, maybe. I'm not saying you're wrong. I spoke to some Russians who claimed Stalin wasn't in a panic those first days, but he was poisoned by spies. Stalin was a paranoid person, but he was both paranoid and there were people out to get him. I'm not buying it. I'm not saying it doesn't didn't happen, but I'm just not buying it as a likely scenario. Um, I would. There are no sources to yeah, Suter. Um, I would say that that is Soviet. Shall we say Soviet revisionism to try to explain his absence. Um, as opposed to, um, you know, him having a mental breakdown. Because I think he has a mental break. Because basically, I get, I don't even know if he eats. I, I, I honestly don't know if he eats during that, that time period or whether he literally, to my understanding, is not talking to anybody. Maybe they're opening the door and, and putting in food in, in for him to eat. But I don't even know if he's doing that. Um, so... I think if it was that, once he was well and showing himself in public, I think that would have made a good um, propaganda thing at the time, but they don't do it, so I don't think spies are getting that close. I really don't believe all of these 
so you know the these all the show trials make it out that there's a bunch of trotskyites in the soviet union wanting to overthrow stalin and stalinism i don't believe that that exists uh to the at least to the i'm not saying that there aren't trotskyites somewhere in, in the soviet union i'm sure there were but i don't believe it's to the level that the show trials make it out um i think stalin is a paranoid person and is using purges and other things and i don't see this agent theoretically uh being some sort of foreign poisoner um i just don't see that and i don't um i don't see what a poisoner who's tight you know because obviously i mean it would uh, just the luck of i'm just examining the 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 basic thought process here the luck of happening to poison him just sur surrep uh, just a happenstance to um to put it at the same time of the invasion is just is just too good to be true i <sighs> that some internal soviet anti Stalinist person is deciding to do it right when the Germans invade. I think you'd want to take him out earlier on or before. So no, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it at all. Um, so yeah, Stalin, Stalin, Stalin knows that there's a big German army sitting on on its on his border. He knows that. He knows there are um, German divisions sitting in Romania. Divisions. He knows this. He doesn't believe they're going to be attacked in 1941. He does not believe Hitler is his best buddy. He knows Hitler is an enemy. He knows Hitler will attack at some point when Hitler is ready to. I think Stalin knows this and would attack as soon as... He thinks the German army is committed enough somewhere that the attack would be successful. With the appalling conditions of the Winter War and the attempt at rebuilding the army, and they were only partway through it in 41, I don't think Stalin was ready and going to attack in 41 unless he truly believes that the overwhelming bulk of the German army is committed in a desperate fight somewhere else. At least that's my, my current assessment from all the books and all the reading, all the documentaries that I've ever had. Again, I could be wrong, but I don't think... Okay, sure thing, IKB. I will check it out sometime this weekend. Um... And I'm not saying it wouldn't have made a difference. I just don't know if that would have... You know, a, a vigorous British counterattack at a few points would have changed certain battles. I don't know if that would have be enough to change the outcome of Crete. Now, okay, but so... So if you keep the bulk of the German army here, but that's, let's say... 60 70 percent that still leaves 30 40 percent of or at least the, the german army that was already sitting here not the army that was sitting over you know already in occupation duty I'm talking about the units that were getting ready for barbarossa if you were to take 30 percent of the divisions that were getting ready for barbarossa and they can be a bit heavier on particularly some motorized divisions but you don't want all motorized because you're doing a lot of naval type invasions you know this is if we were looking at you know, December 40, uh, you know, the December, beginning of 1941. Uh, so December um, 1940, uh, it's winter up here. But hey, it's good, good conditions down here. Maybe the sea, you know, there might be some storm that's on a particular time that's rough for invasion. But you could be, you know, putting the screws to, to Greece saying, you know, look, you're either joining us or we're invading you guys. And here's our divisions getting ready to go. Um, will happily because Germany would have been happy to have um, Greece in the Axis, and Greece was trying to get into the Axis. That's my understanding. It was Mussolini wanting Greek territory that was saying no to Greece in the Axis. That that's Axis. That's my understanding of the situation. But um, 
whatever it is, push into here and then, you know, take out Cyprus, do landings along here, you don't need motorized forces to secure ports. And coming up with some of the naval assets and the um, amphibious assets, you know, getting, trying to capture and get a hold of um, shipping to do it, you know, civilian shipping to do it. You can turn a civilian ship into an anti-aircraft ship pretty easy. Um, not that they've become good surface warfare ships, but, you know, to protect stuff here. You could, and with the Luftwaffe moving around here, airborne forces, I think you can move it with enough forces in 41 that Stalin isn't going to bait. Now, maybe 42, you know, after Stalin has reorganized his forces fully from the, the disaster of you know, the Winter War, and he might be getting ready and think, oh, this is a great time if there's enough German forces down here to do so, but he won't in 41. Um, I do think the Soviets were getting ready for a war with Germany. I just think they were playing for time um, doing that. That's my, my uh, thing. Stalin knows many things, how he interprets things that he knows. Yeah, obviously that that's a real question because there were spies telling him that the Germans were planning on invading. He just dismisses them. But there were probably also spies telling him that they weren't planning on invading. I, I, I think I think probably both are probably true and he's just picking the ones he wants to have. And so how do I put this? Again, I have to always state warfare is a political act politics is perception so that if Germany in its invasion can create the perception that when they finally do invade that they are unstoppable I can see a Soviet collapse happening especially if you are maybe even threatening potentially coming up through Iraq and the south here um, and in 42 you know, in the beginning of, you know, as soon as they think the, the weather is dry enough to, for a good invasion, Germany launching into 42 would be a good thing. Now, here's the big thing. What happens if Germany secures the Mediterranean early enough in 41? And by secure, I may or may not be getting um, uh, Gibraltar, but definitely, you know, getting here and coming down in through the Mediterranean here, and maybe looking at, at getting here. Maybe, maybe you can talk the Japanese out of attacking um, the Western Allies. That does one of two things. One, it might keep America out of the war. Or two, if America is going to come into the war, it's going to be seen as um, a foreign invasion, okay? You know, or, you know, a foreign war. It's not going to be because America is attacked. It's going to be because America is intervening in somebody else's war. So there is not going to be this level of unconditional support for the war. And so that might be a situation that you could keep America out of the war long enough to defeat the Soviet Union... And maybe America cannot come into the war in a successful way to defeat Germany at that point. So maybe at that point you have a... Um, not that America couldn't defeat Germany, but because it would be seen as an aggressive action and an, and an invasion of, of Europe, certainly. Yeah, with with British and other supports, yes, but an invasion and not because Japan attacks you and then Germany declares war. Well, hey, Germany declared war on us. You know, we didn't declare war on them. They declared war on us. So, yeah, we declare war back on you and, and, and fight you anyways. 
Also, if you take French Syria and the Holy Land, you could have a strong arm Turkey letting you supplies move over land. Oh, absolutely. Now, um, the rail system here, this is sort of incorrect because this railway does not go like this, like it shows here. This railway goes through Syria and then back into Turkey because it was built before there was the definition of it. Because I know this because in, I think it's 19, sometime after 1936, but I think it's 1939, uh, I, I have a copy of a, or elements, uh, you know, digital, digi digitized stuff from a railway magazine that somebody um, uh, did of their trip, uh, their railway trip um, in this part of the world. And so they, they, you know, start in Turkey, but go into Syria, then back to Turkey, but then have to go overland, not to railway, not to rails, but overland into um, Mosul and then down through Bag, you know, through Baghdad to, to the coast here. But still, it's not so much because there's, well, I don't know if this, I don't know if this exists at this time because um, it doesn't look like it connects anywhere but between these two places. No, oh, interesting. I don't see any railways over here. Um, but if you have Turkey, like you say, strong arm Turkey, um, a combination with rewards, you know, um, you have the very much abilities to put forces down in here kind of thing and you can knock knock it out so I can do plausible what ifs Germany is winning here I, I think everybody who's listening can agree that this might might work and to you know yes if you get nuclear weapons that's a game changer but Germany may have nuclear weapons too and what how does that change the world eventually but without nuclear weapons all it takes is Germany to be able to strategically move a large enough force to deal with an invasion. So there might be trouble holding, say, you know, defeating an invasion here because of lack of good railway support to be able to move large enough forces, maybe or um, problems dealing with, say, you know, an American invasion up at Narvik, the ability, again, Germany. I think America, partially because of poking by Stalin, but I, I think America is too concerned on the direct approach as opposed to the indirect approach. You know, what's, what's, you know, yes, why not just land here in Hamburg and drive straight towards Berlin? Yeah, that, that's the most direct approach, obviously. Now that wasn't going to work, and we all know that, especially not in June 1944. Um, but the U.S. is pushing here. Why didn't they plan and do a 1943 Narvik invasion? What's that going to do, you know? Um... At some, you know, some stage down here, you hold, you respect Sweden's um, neutrality. Finland is not at war. I don't know if they're at war with Britain. They're definitely not at war with the America. Um, and you take out Narvik, and then you you leapfrog and take out the Germans north of Narvik. Why don't they do this in 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 forty three? Maybe it's landing craft. You know, they can only get enough landing craft to, to come down in Sicily. Maybe. But why not in, you know, okay. You know, you got to do it by fall. You know, probably the invasion, the, the initial invasion and securing that needs to happen in fall. But you cut off the, the steel supplies that are still being, you know, moved down coastally along Norway from Germany, you um, massively free up the ability to move supplies into um, Russia this way because you won't have the Luftwaffe or, or the Germans coming out, you know, submarines coming out from local naval bases. Sure, they can, submarines can still, you know, come out from, you know, southern Norway up here, but okay, they, you know, but you, you cut off all of this stuff here. 
you could probably get Finland to peace out earlier, especially if America and Britain were to put a little pressure on um, the Soviet Union. So in 1944, 43, you know, or er, early 44, you go, hey, Soviet Union will sign a, a you know, a, um, a ceasefire with you. And if you go back to, you know, okay, you know, give them this. You know, but um, it'll it'll do a ceasefire with you. I think Mannerheim would have taken that agreement, and with the Soviets pushing down here and still holding Leningrad, and if the Americans had landed up in Narvik, I don't see the Germans. You know, the German forces here. I mean, I know they fought their they fought the Finns briefly in retreating out sort of to Norway and whatnot, and maybe down here a bit. But if America's pushing here, I think that would cause a surrender of these German forces because there's nowhere to fight their way out to. They're, they're not going to fight their way out through Finland and, and get evacuated, um, you know, over, over the seas. So you could have shut down this whole northern front area by taking out Narvik. I don't know why they don't do this. According to my old railway maps, there's a rail connection Tur uh, from Turkey into what is now Armenia. Okay. Okay. Um, very interesting. I wouldn't mind. Ha I may even have, because I have a bunch of them, but I wouldn't mind if you post that. If you if you have a, a, a scanned copy of that um, stuff, I, I don't know if you have it scanned or whatnot. I'd love to see some, um, uh, some railway there, maps from the period. But, um, you know, so I don't understand why they don't do this indirect approach to, because it is an indirect approach to Berlin, but it cuts this area off, it cuts off the front, it frees up all of the Soviet forces that are facing Finland. I mean, I'm sure they keep some, you know, border watch troops or whatnot here, but it would um, free up all the rest and all the rest of the efforts. They wouldn't have to worry about you know, any shipping problems up here, railway connections, whatnot. And Germany really couldn't do anything. I think the best bet Germany could do at some point is negotiate with the Finns to try to allow them to evacuate their troops, you know, peacefully from Finland. And Finland might agree to that just as, you know, a thing. Um, but I think Mannerheim would have gone for that. And you would have, you know done this, I think that would have done this. There are lots of rail lines in French North Africa with plans to extend lines south to the river Niger and Dakar. Um, yeah, I know. Okay, yeah, there are some here on this this map here. There are there are a bunch. Um, coastally, you could probably build a rail line down to Dakar, um, which is right here. Uh, I do not think, I still wonder if today, if we really have the technology to build railway successfully across this terrain and keep the sand off enough. I just don't know the answer to it. Um, great. Thanks, IKB. Thank you. I do appreciate that. I will take a look. Um, I don't know if they, you know, it's more of, it's like that dream of bottling up the uh, Mediterranean, draining it to create more land. Still have a Mediterranean, but, but um, the, you know, like turn the Adriatic into a, um, you know, mostly land and some of these other areas along here that, you know, incre increase the land mass, increase some of the land mass off the coasts here. Some of this is super deep, but even the rest, you know, uh, unrealistic proposals. That's probably a little more realistic coming across here, but um, that you know, how do you stop sand dunes? Because you just build the wall higher and higher and higher. You're just building mountains of sand, and I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's, uh, and I really don't know if there's a path that you could find. There may be a path through here that just is not sand duny enough for a long enough time. I don't know. I just don't know if if you really could do that in a practical sense. But yeah, so so yes, even you know Germany probably can't defend up here. But in sort of central area Germany you 
you can it it can get really really hard to invade if that German army is not tied down fighting on the Eastern Front if it has the ability to have a significant part of it be able to strategically redeploy in this central area that I think would be a very difficult um, way to deal with it here. Well, guys, I've been loving ch chatting with everybody here. Suter, IKB, um, and let's see who else here. Um, Pepe, um, you're scrolling back up. Rick, if you're still around, great chatting with you guys. Alex and everybody else here. Um, but I think we're going to end this for today. Oh, Exurgent, if you're still around, I don't know. Uh, we're going to end this for today. I want to th thank you all um, for hanging out with me. Uh, tomorrow, we will be doing, um, I will be starting, at the same time I started this stream, tomorrow we'll be starting some uh, War Thunder. Uh, there are drops, if you're watching, on. you can even get it now, but there are drops on Twitch for War Thunder, if you want to get that either today or tomorrow. Um, nothing terribly great, but um, if you want to check that out. We'll be doing some War Thunder, and then we will, at um, an hour and 15 minutes ago from, from now, we'll be starting a watch party over on um, uh, Discord for Frank the original Frankenstein movie and the original Dracula movie. So if you guys want to um, hang out for sort of pre-Halloween, Halloween, Halloween uh, type um, stuff, the original, the original movies... Uh, do that and everything so thank you all um and 